difference being that for me, for example, that I don't have severe disease or gluten sensitivity, this is an on and off, a quick on and off situation. So if I eat gluten and I eat rizomum because of this peptide carrying in the gluten, my intestine becomes leak. Uh, I open this shortcut in between cells. Gluten and God knows what else comes through. But on the other side of the barrier, there's this immune system that, that is doing the job right. Save the enemy and clean the mess and I don't have consequences. For people with severe disease or gluten sensitivity, there's a genetic background that make these people to mismanage this possible enemy. Um, and therefore, you will eventually pay consequences. Uh, the, for severe disease particularly, there's another problem. And while for me is on and off, for people with severe disease, this activation of this zonal pathway is sustained. So you don't, you don't have just this open and close, but you have an open and, you know, these doors got stuck over for a long time. So um, when you open the door, of course, everybody comes, not just school. So it is conceivable that other substances, other nutrients, you know, bacterial products, whatever, they come through. And it is possible that, you know, the associated conditions of other comorbidities like other immune diseases and so on and so forth can be the consequence of this leaky gut that now allows everybody to come in. And, and again, on a specific genetic background, you can develop, you know, a series of problems besides severe disease. Okay. Um, is that potentially one of the reasons why we see so many different manifestations, uh, extra intestinal manifestations? Is this intestinal permeability, or do you think there are, there are just other immune factors at play, or a combination? Yeah, I'm a little bit biased here, but that would be my belief. Um, you know, otherwise, I, I don't know how to explain the fact that despite the, the battlefield of this war is undisputably the gut. Uh, the, there is no organ or tissue that is spared. Uh, it can go that far to go to the brain. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I have, you know, I have a way to say that, you know, the gut is not like Las Vegas. What happened to the gut doesn't stay in the gut. So, in other okay. words, stuff comes in, you activate the immune system, that is created a local inflammation because that's the battlefield. But these soldiers, they are the ones that eventually produce this inflammation, and therefore, you know, the consequences that you see in the gut, they are not committed to stay there. This soldier, the immune cells, may eventually start to move around. Um, so, and depending what kind of, uh, you know, um, destination they would take. If they go to the joint, you can develop the joint pain. Go to the skin, you can develop, you know, particular rash, for example, dermatitis, periformis. Sure. Um, if you go to the brain, you can develop, you know, behavioral changes. You can go through depression, anxiety, to schizophrenia, and so on, and autism, and so on, and so forth. Um, so it, it really depends on the fact that once the levees are bre breached and stuff comes through, and the immune system is not tuned to do the job right, because genetically predisposed to mismanage this enemy. Um, you know, it, it, these soldiers who are armed, they go out of control. And what nobody knows, and that will be an, an extremely interesting, you know, um, concept to understand is why for you, for example, your soldiers, i.e. immune cells, would decide to go to the brain, and for me would decide to go to the pancreas so that you develop, uh, let's say, um, um, you know, depression and I develop type 1 diabetes. Nobody knows. I mean, that, that would be quite a, an interesting finding to figure out how this is all played out. I look at it much like a food, uh, you know, or a drug. If we give a thousand people the same drug, we're going to get potentially a lot of different people reacting in a lot of different ways. Absolutely. So food, really not, not much different. Absolutely. Do Dr. Anderson and his group in Australia did some studies and they recently, I think I want to say it was last July, discovered about 400 new unique gluten proteins that we didn't know about prior and they found that 10% of these new proteins were immunoreactive and the most immunoreactive or the most immune um, inciting 
weren't the original gliadin that, that everybody says gliadin is this uh, this major component or this major inciting factor for celiac disease. What are your thoughts on, on that research? Well, again, this confirms once again that you know this is a weird protein. Uh, that uh, it's, 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 it would be very, very difficult to tackle um, the problem. Uh, try to, for example, genetically engineer grains to make them not toxic. There are too many pieces of this protein that they are they are harmful for people with CD disease. What is interesting is that people start to map out these fragments. So. Dr. Anderson found, you know, a series of this, you know, um, fragment they are immune reactive. In other words, that makes, you know, the immune system to go, you know, out of control if you're genetically predisposed. Uh, but this same peptide can induce an immune reaction in anybody. Um, there are other fragments they are cytotoxic, right? yeah, they kill the cells, mm -hmm. and others that indeed make the intestine leak. Others that they produce chemokines, chemicals that attract, you know, immune cell 